Okay, thank you, thank you guys for joining join us here. Uh, my name is Rodrigo. I'm going to present to you the bus, a new Zephyr bus, right? I don't know. I, I have asked before, but I, I, I think many, some of you are using that. But today we are going to, to I'm going to describe that in more details. And the, the, the presentation is really dense, in fact, but uh, uh, I guess uh, we, are, we are going to have another moment uh, on Thursday. If you need to go deep in details, I'm going to, to have a tutorial about the bus. So this, this talks about the, 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 general, the general idea and things that we can do, right? Uh, at the beginning, we can, we can when we, we, we start to, to work with some articles or application or something like that, we, we need to make threads talk each other. It's usual, right? And we have several topologies of communication between threads, right? Uh, and one-to-one -one is the, the first one that we started, right? <laughs> and we have several kind of objects to help us for leave through stack, message queues, and so forth, right? But when we start to talk from one thread to several threads, for many, for many threads, we, we don't have that. Just in, in this scenario, we already don't have this kind of thing. Uh, mailbox maybe help you with that, but it's not so easy to do because it not, uh, uh, it not, it's not able to, to make uh, one too many simultaneously. So you have to, to do that manually, doing that for each thread you need to, to, to send, and you need to do a lot of work by yourself, right? And when, when, you, you, when we think about many too many, it's even harder, right? Because we have to so many threads, we have to connect each thread, and sometimes we have to have uh, uh, full uh, communication from A to B, for example, and B to A. And if you are going to think to do that with a message queue, for example, you'd, have, you'd need to have a, a bunch of that, right? So it's hard to, to keep and hard to scale with this kind of thing, right? So the idea at, at that time it was to develop a, a bus to, to help developers to make threads talks, talk, talk each other. Right, because we we didn't have any any uh, uh, any tools for for doing that, so we we need to create that, right? The bus, but oh sorry, and and the bus the bus uh, could solve the one to one one to many and one to and many to many communications topology. Okay, is that good? So, but we 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 have seen that on. Linux on Windows and Mac, for example, we, we have applications and the applications can can talk each other. But here we are talking about embedded systems, right? We have different kind of challenges. Uh, and when I am when I, I am telling embedded systems, because I am talking about really constrained devices, uh, our, uh, Zephyr uh, uh, can run on really constrained devices with. I don't know, 16 k kilobytes of memory, for example, where we cannot run Linux, for, for, for example. And we have process limitations as well. We, we cannot run that in a pooling in a really fast way to, to guarantee that everything runs, right? Because we have a, a, a bunch of uh, battery-powered devices, right? So we need to, to think on this kind of scenario as well. So energy is part of that. We need to, to, to focus on that as well. So I started uh, as Zbus as part of my PhD. I, I work uh, in, a, in a university. I'm a professor, but I have a, I, I'm part of Innovation Center. I have a company. I, we work a lot of with, with embedded systems. And we did that internally in the past. And we came out with a, 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 a bus, right? A bus that could make threads to talk each other like uh, uh, MQTT or like something like that, 
right, where you have the publisher and you have the sub subscriber which can receive the notifications and things like that. But to make like MQTT, we need to have topics, and topics usually uh, relies on, on strings, and it's not easy or good for embedded systems. So here we have a kind of pub sub using channels, addresses, and things like that. It's more efficient or for our cases, right? So we have two kind of uh, observers here. We have the subscribers. Usually we, we see that on MQTT and other communication protocols. And in, in Zbus, we have subscribers as asynchronous entities that can receive notifications from the bus when a channel change. So, okay? When someone uh, published to a channel, uh, 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 the channel will notify the, the, the subscriber asynchronously, right? And we have also the synchronous uh, subscribers, uh, sorry, synchronous observers, because observer, we have two kinds of observers. We have subscribers and listeners. And listeners are synchronous and they are mainly callbacks. When a channel changes, the bus calls some callbacks. You can just uh, 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 make the, 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 the listener to see or to observe a channel and that's it. We are going to talk more in details. And a good aspect of that is, uh, is that subscribers are decoupled in, in terms of code, right? In time, space, and synchronization. I uh, roughly talk about that. In time, we, we can say that when a publishing action uh, occurs, the thread doesn't need to, to, to execute at the same time, right? So the subscribers are, are, are asynchronous, so it doesn't need to have at the same time time decoupling. Uh, they don't need to know each other, so the subscriber and the publisher do doesn't need to know uh, don't need to know each other, right? So, decoupling time and space. And synchronization, we can say that the subscriber can run a different load or different execution there uh, uh, other than the communication. So, it, it doesn't need to, to wait the communication. It can run all other things and then get back the communication, check if there is something there, okay? Uh, in, in the, uh, on, the other hand, on, on the other hand, here we have the listeners that are coupled in time and synchronization. So the callbacks runs exactly immediately possible uh, uh, when the, the, uh, some, some thread publishes to a channel. So when you publish to a channel, the callbacks are executed. So they are coupled in time and synchronization. Uh, why, why I'm talking about coupling, decoupling, and thing like that? Because we are talking about soft engineering practices, right? And this is the, those those kind of decouplings here gives us a, a lot of benefits. We are talking about that in the future, in a software perspective, right? And we have available actions on on Zbus. We have uh, the possibility of read the channel. Right, uh, any thread can read the channel. There is not necessary only subscribers or listeners. So any thread of the system, even a, a sensor or system thread can can read the channel. Um, uh, a thread can publish to a channel. Right, the publishing action causes an execution of a listener or a put on a, 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 a subscription and sub subscribe notification queue. Right. So when you publish to a channel, the publication executes. We are, we are going to in details on, on that, but you execute the listeners and you, you enqueue the notifications on the, the subscribers. It's almost that. The notify one here is almost the same as publish, but it doesn't require to change the data on the, the, the channel, right? So when you publish to a channel and you don't need to change the data or for example, you are sending an, an event. You are not uh, sending information, just telling on some event occurred. You can just notify instead of publish. It, the, it makes the same thing, but you don't need to change the message. So the message is the content of the channel, which you can use to transfer data between the uh, 
the producer and consumers, right? And this is this is a kind of uh, uh, illustration. Uh, it's good to to, to know how Zbus works uh, underneath because uh, uh, sometimes we can improve our code just by knowing that, right? Uh, we we have some steps here. Uh, first, for example, uh, thread one wants to publish to channel B, right? The first step is to lock the channel. We use mutex for that, right? Um, for some reasons, we use mutex instead, instead of semaphores. And after that, the thread one uh, replaces the message. We have uh, on the on the bus we have shared memory, right? We we don't send the message. On, from from the consumer to the or from the producer to the consumer, right? We just set that on a, a shared memory, and the consumer goes there and consumes the data. So both are talking about the same part of the memory. We are not uh, replicating that, right? This is a kind of approach, and this is the fastest one uh, uh, we we could. Uh, uh, reach right. So first, lock the channel. Second, you replace the message. Third, you execute the listeners. Uh, they they execute the listeners, and for uh, and and then you enqueue the notification to the thread too. For uh, in that example, I put here uh, uh, a queue. Right, the notification queue is a message queue instead. In, in fact, so. When you are running inside a thread and you need to subscribe, you just need you just receive a, a notification, right? The, the listeners are executed, but the the subscriber just received a notification, and with the notification, it can goes there and and take the the, the it can go there and take the the information. Okay, so here in Zbus we don't have uh, the event dispatcher. In fact, we don't have a central central entity doing this kind of thing, so it's really different. But the the all the all the the, the stuff that we we, we discuss here are executed by the publisher, okay. So this is why we call virtual distributed event dispatcher. This is the, we 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 have we have the, the the event dispatcher logic running distributed by the publishers. And we don't have, in fact, uh, 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 event dispatcher, right? This is why we, we call that virtual. So the VD, I call that VDD, right? <laughs> no, not really weird thing. But the, the VDD brings us a, a lot of good, good, uh, uh, a lot of advantages. But First, uh, talking about the, the distribution of an event or a message, in fact. Uh, for example, we can say this, this scenario here. And in this scenario, thread one is publishing to, to, to channel A, right? And all the other threads and listeners here are observing that channel. So when, he, when thread one publishes to channel A, the message needs to must to 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 reach all of that all of them, right? Thread two, but, but for the subscribers, just the notification that the channel has changed, not the message. In fact, but the listeners receives the message here. Okay, and the the uh, I don't know if you ha already have uh, seen the documentation. I, I I've put that. Uh, on on last uh, uh, version of Zephyr, Zephyr. and first uh, we can see that 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 uh, uh, publication is happens in the thread one context, right? And here in A we have some action that threads thread one is running, and after that in B we have a a lock to the chain away. After that. That we, we replace the message and executes the the listeners listen one and listener two, right? After that, we notify thread two, thread three, and thread four. Someone could ask why 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 not thread two preempts the 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 execution and reads the message, right? Thread two has more more priority. If you if you take a look at at the at the arrow here, uh, the most, the highest priority thread is four. 
T1 is just the, the lowest one. But when you notify the thread, as we use mutex, mutex is to, to lock channels, we have in Zephyr, on Zephyr, we have the priority inheritance feature. So when, when you do this kind of thing, thread one goes to the, the same, uh, same priority ten, ten, uh, thread, sorry, thread one goes to the, uh, receives the same priority then as thread two, and then thread three and thread four. So this is, this is why we, 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 we are trying to finish the publish process as soon as possible, but without interfering in other uh, higher con context priority things. But we, are, we are going to talk about that. And next, when, when you finish the publish, the, the, the publishing action, the subscribers can act. They received the notification, so they, they can do something. In this, in this scenario here, I am I'm telling you that Thread4 goes there and read the channel. So it locks the channel, cops the message, unlocks the channel. Do something get out of the, the MCU and thread three and thread two and goes on, okay? In this way, after, the, 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 after this image, the message started from T1, right? And now is on L, L1, L2, L3, oh, T4, T3, and T2. So we could uh, share our, our message to all the interested the observers. Is that okay? So, uh, a big advantage fro uh, of from from sorry, a big advantage from VDD is that we can run different kind of context without interfering each other. Here, for example, if we think thread three and four having lower priority than thread one and two, if they are communicating in channel B by via channel B, right? They can, they, they can be preempted by thread one to make a, a higher priority context communication. So it can, can happen because the event dispatcher is distributed, it's not central. If we have just one event dispatcher, it will, it will happen, uh, it could happen some kind of priority inversion like that because you, you would have a low, low priority thread communication uh, uh, preventing a high priority thread communication to, to happen. So even dispatcher is good for, for that as well. Uh, and it, it, uh, it, it, it really, it's really interesting. So another available action for uh, this action is for is more for advanced use. Don't use that if you are not sure to do what what you are doing. Um, the the claim finished. Uh, um, it's a pair, right? The claim you you are locking the channel, and after that you can access the metadata of the channel. So we have a lot of metadata there. We have the subscribers. We have the message. In fact, we have a user data pointer, so you can pass a member, um, um, I don't know, you can add your metadata to the channel, right? So in this kind of thing, you can, you can do a lot of, a lot of stuff with, with, with the, the channel, claim, change, and finish, claim, fin uh, and finish, okay? And I, I guess this is the last action. So this is a really, really usual uh, application, mainly for, for IoT, for example. Uh, where we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, a trash can level uh, monitoring system or level, water level or temperature of a room, I, I don't know, um, IoT application. And this application, uh, we, can, we can stretch like that. You can do differently, but in a different way, but that's a, a kind of solution. And here we have a timer. Time to time it triggers, it's it published to the, the start trigger channel. As the sensor thread is a, an observer, it will receive the notification and start to fetch the, the, to fetch the sensors, for example. It fetches the sensor, sensor data, and then publishes to sensor, 
sensor data channel, obviously, right? The name is, is great. And after that, as, as core is uh, an observer of, uh, of sensor data, it will receive the notification, gets the information, and make some math over that. I don't know, uh, collect some, some information of that, make a box plot, and then set, uh, uh, send that to the payload, publish to the payload. As Laura Thread is an observer of the payload, it gets the data sent to the internet when it's finished, when the, the, the transaction is done, it, make, it published to the transmission done. Uh, uh, observing both channel start trigger and transmission done, we have the blink callback, right? So when the time triggers, everything is in a kind of chain of actions is working, right? But it, is it good? Why, why, why is it? I have four channels, three threads. So a good thing here is that we can make changes without changing the code of the exist, change the exist code, existing code. So for example, I, I would like to add a button on the system to initiate the, the, the sequence instead of the timer, only the timer. I just need to add a button and everything keeps the same code. I would like to store all the payloads to audit the system in a future, I don't know, the government needs, needs that for some reason. I just need to add another subscriber to the payload and doesn't, it doesn't need to, to change anything, just add, right? I, I would like to to get the storage data via Bluetooth, for example, I could do that just doing this and, for example, make some debug or something like that. I would like to see if the transmission done is, is happening. Is it possible without changing anything, right? I would like to, um, to insert a mock to test better my system, to, to check if the core is working properly because when you receive I don't know, a, a set of data, the, the, the core is not responding properly. I would like to, to see what's happening. I just need to add, okay? So it gives us a lot of flexibility and we, we, it gives us really a really interest power to, to make our code and change things there, okay? Is that okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> And for instance, some, I don't know, I don't have LoRa 1 cover, coverage, I would like to use NBIoT. Just remove the code and add another one, okay? If you do that using a kind of uh, interface, you, you didn't, uh, okay, it's, it's good, right? You don't, you don't need to, to, to change the LoRa. You can reuse that in other code, right, in other product you have. You just need to add a new module that you can reuse in other modules because you, you can have that module working with a payload and a transmission done channel. You can reuse that. So, some, I don't know, my, my, in my product, product, I would like to remove the timer. Just remove the timer, the button will do the, the, the work. Okay, so some usage considerations. Uh, it's not the end of the presentation. I have a lot of slides, but I, I, good to, I, I, I think it's good to finish a part to, to talk about other. And it promotes event-driven architecture. It's really good for embedded system software because of the, the battery-powered devices. We can, goes, uh, we, we can go to a, 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 a low level, a, low, a, a really deep sleep mode and then we can react to some things using interrupts and things like that. Uh, in this way, we have, uh, uh, using ZBuzz, we have a unified way to make threads talk. So for mainly all the communications, you can, you can use ZBuzz for that. There are some, I, I would not, so I, I will talk about that. Uh, we have code decoupling, we talk about that. And this is really amazing because we can reuse the code, promotes the reuse here. Uh, we, we can re, uh, reuse the code, we can add some, some different kind of things without 
because when you when you have a bare metal system, for example, this uh, if you don't do that in the in a really good way, you are doing a, co a kind of coupled code because all the parts talk each other. It's it's really hard to do that. You are when you use our artos, you can do that smoothly separated but when you when, when you have a, mes a, a message queue from an, uh, a node to a th from a thread to another thread and they need to know each other you are doing a kind of coupling so if you want to change this part you need to change th the other part as well so it's not good when you are trying to maintain a code or change something in the future or add some some functionality it's not easy to do when you have a coupled code Okay, and it promotes reuse. So when you when you have when you have that uh, well tested, and you you would like to reuse that on different kind of products, you can do. It's really straightforward to do that. And even when you are using Zephyr, that has a really big, uh, 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 big not but big in big. It's awesome. Uh, uh, layer of abstraction over drivers and device devices in fact. So if you are using that over Zephyr, it would be really better. It increases the, the, the testability of the system by increasing controllability and observability. When you have, uh, uh, what, 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 what are you trying to, to, to tell us, right? Uh, in, in this case, when, you, when, it, when can, you can add a mock, for example, you in, in, in this situation, you have sensor thread sends data, sending data to sensor data. But if you would like to check core, you could, you, you could change the mock and, and send the data there. You can, you can send data, uh, uh, replacing threads, so you can sense and see what, is, is, uh, what, what, what the, the module is, is outputting. I don't see that. And, and it's really interesting when you are trying to test the, the, the system because you can replace parts here. I, I, I don't have the sensor yet, no problem. I don't know, you can, you can uh, add a mock here, uh, uh, faking the, the sensor and the system can go and you can uh, continue the implementation until it gets, uh, I don't know, gets your home or something like that, okay? So you can observe and control that better when you are trying to use the, the, the and it's really extensible. If you if you use claim finished with user data, you can add, I don't know, a lot of things on top of over the bus, right? Uh, we can think that li almost like the a, a socket and an TCP uh, a protocol, for example, a, a TCP protocol uses socket to make a really interesting thing. Right, so we can do that. Use Zbus. So Zbus is the foundation. It's really simple, short. Uh, um, sometimes maybe when you are trying to 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 use that, if you do, um, you are thinking it's a little hard to do some parts of that. Be uh, I I tried to 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 do the best to make it easier to use, but we have a lot of constraints, and those constraints makes us to do things in a different kind of way, okay? Uh, some, some cons is we have uh, too many possibilities. We have listeners, subscribers, we can uh, uh, subscribe to a topic statically, dynamically. I, 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 I have a, we have a lot of, of details I, I didn't show here because we are going to show that in, in the next presentation on Thursday. And so it's it's uh, there are there is a lot of things, but I I I submitted a lot of samples. The documentation I don't know if you have heard uh, have have read that it's really complete and a lot of details. And I I tried to show the community on, on this kind of thing. Uh, it's not uh, for for streaming, right? If you if you are doing streaming using Zbus, maybe you are um, increasing the latency of the communication, right? Because you, I don't know, if you have a, a, a sensor that reads the uh, every two milliseconds and publishes to a channel, 
maybe you are you are going to increase the latency of the bus but if you do that using the right pro, uh, priority and everything else maybe it will work for you okay and but in most cases use pipes right pipes message queues or something like that for intensive byte stream and there is no there's no guarantees for subscribers to receive the message sorry they will receive the message but sometimes we we, we can lost some messages how 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 uh, it's it's almost like that if you have a a, cons a producer producing really fast and the consumer is consuming slowly the notification gets to the the, the 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 consumer but the, when the consumers go there the message is already already changed it so maybe you have duplications loss i i i, I don't know i we i didn't see any losses in fact we have a benchmark we have a lot of things we don't see losses but duplications is is possible if you do that in a wrong way okay so zbus feature backlogs guys i i'm i'm going to to talk almost all the time with a few uh, q and a time because we have a lot of details and we are going to have another another time to discuss more about zbus okay but we have a, a kind of features backlog and i would like to 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 call you to talk about it about it in the zbus uh, uh, discord channel but I am going to talk about that because we are, we are need to know where to go, right? We have Zbus, but what the community needs. So, uh, Zbus async APIs are, are on our radar uh, because you cannot run uh, a publishing or any, any Zbus, uh, uh, Zbus APIs inside on ISR, right? So, I am planning to implement uh, a kind of async uh, um, uh, set of of APIs to make that possible, right? So with that, we we would avoid uh, work queues for ISR, right? And we we could have a dedicated Zbus thread to do that. It's a kind of executor to that receives the 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 attempts to do a publishing or a read, for example, and and queue that and then execute. It's almost like that. And we can control that with, I don't know, the priority we, we wish and the, the stack size we wish, right? So this is, this is a really interesting thing that we need to, to, to think about. Uh, on subscriber to help, uh, to help us to, uh, 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 a on subscriber is just a, uh, 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 subscriber that listen huh? it's not good here yeah? a subscriber that observers <laughs> all the channels right uh, it can help us to extend the uh, zbus features sometimes we need to do a lot of things and it's hard to do that in in the way the things are, are, are doing because we, we if we need to uh, we need if we need a subscriber that has all the events all the notifications on it, we need to subscribe on all the channels. It's a, it's a, a sugar, sugar feature, right? Uh, I, I, I would like to do some, some Zbus uh, integrations with other subsystems, right? Input subsystem is one of them. I, I guess it's really, it's a really good match with Zbus. When you press a key, we, you, uh, you could receive a, an event on. As a bus channel, I, 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 this is this is a, a really good thing to do, and add some samples in for Bluetooth sensors, FSM, and other other parts of the systems that can can be uh, uh, can can be good with Zbus, right? And we are going to talk about a, a really trick one uh, part is. Uh, uh, the bus for moot core. Oh, sorry. Uh, in this, in this, in this case here, I, I would like to to add a clone of the bus 
in different cores, right? We have a, a Zbus here and a clone in a different core, and both are synchronized by an IPC service, for example. When it, in this kind of thing, you, are, you can see that application I, I told you working in different cores. This would be interesting. I don't know if you have already worked with mood core, but it's not so easy. Nowadays, we have open, open, uh, oops, uh, open amp, right? Helping us, we have a lot of uh, initiatives, but it's not so straightforward to do that, and we need to do a lot of work. Okay, and mood target. After after we we solved mood core, we can go to mood target. Mood target. You you can have different SOCs talking to each other with Zbus clones, and uh, the the trans transmission or interface could be Bluetooth or, I don't know, serial or at internet or whatever, right? It would be really good. And uh, the, the, the last one is a Zbus desktop version. Wh why that? Well, this, this is interesting because you, can, you could develop some model to work with Zbus, right? So maybe you have a, an AI model that generates something that you want to test on your embedded system device. You could do that in Python and make that to work with your core thread that's already implemented on the implemented on the device, right? So it would be really good, or use Rust or MATLAB or something that you can connect to the bus on the computer and the computers and the, the embedded Zbus work together. It would be really interesting to see that work, okay? And if community like that, we can, we can start to talk about that. So, uh, I, I would like to discuss more about that, so please, if you have any question about the roadmap or, I don't know, need, I, I, I wouldn't like that on Zbuzz or something like that, go to Z uh, Zephyr Zbuzz Discord channel, right, and talk to, talk to us. And if you have any, any doubt about Zbuzz as well, go to the Zbuzz channel. I'm answering that uh, a lot, right? Please, read the documentation first, <laughs> right? And we have we have uh, 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 a lot of things to to talk, but I'm going to to put that tips and tricks to the, the to the next talk, okay? And I'm going to to open to questions and and answers. We have three minutes and twenty seconds. Any any question? Okay. Okay, who is responsible for locking, unlocking the channel, and to allocate the data, right? Everything is, is done when you, the allocation is done when you describe uh, a channel. When you define a channel, everything is done. And the lock and unlock process is during the publish. So you just need to call pub, uh, zbus, chant, pub, and everything is done inside that. You don't need to, to figure out, uh, worry about that, okay? No, the data is not free. In fact, you, you, the data is persistent in this kind of thing. We, we have during the communication we have transient and persistent communication, right? Transient is the, when I talk to you. After that, the, the message goes, goes. I don't know. <laughs> and the, the persistent is when when I publish the message. The message is still there. The system, any part of the system can go there and read the message. Okay. So the message, the, 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 the shared memory is, is uh, uh, static, in fact. I, I have a very long question from the uh, online uh, attendee that was asked a while ago. Okay, uh, okay, go. Uh, I'll relay it now. Good to see Zbus as a firm believer, believer in the coupling threads and avoiding callbacks where possible. I've implemented something similar on one of our FreeRTOS-based platforms using queues and callbacks. 
However, I found that to allow interrupt handlers to use the bus, I needed a dispatcher queue and a thread and a set of APIs that can be called from ISR contacts to post messages. Does Zbus support post from ISR, whereby the listener callbacks run in thread context? I'm going to read that because it was so long I, I, I got lost. So uh, you, you could ask it again, just, just a moment. Oh, I, I, I'll talk to Sam on, on the Discord channel. Sam, please go there and we, we can talk later. And is, is there anybody, uh, another question here? Go, go ahead. Yes, the problem you described before that when you publish your sending faster than the receivers. Okay. In this case, the message is already written. Do you plan on addressing that? It's already addressed. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the, the question was. Uh, the the scenario I, I said the the consumer the, the producer is pr producing more often than the consumer is consuming right what to do yeah you can do you can solve that using listeners <laughs> in fact you can use a listener uh, uh, in conjunction with a message queue for example yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's exactly the, the, the solution because I was thinking uh, I, I'm going to solve that in a different kind. Of, it's it's hard to 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 solve all the, the the community needs, right? This kind of way you can you can solve this this the thing. You you don't need that for all the channels. Some channels need that. So use a listener with a message queue together. Done. Okay. Another question. Oh. Yes. Functionally, quite similar to what you created. Uh, my understanding is like it uses the event, uh, event dispatcher principle. Yes. Is there any other uh, difference between your implementation and that one besides that? Yes. Uh, the, the question is, is there any difference between Nordic Event Manager and Zbuzz in implementation? Right? Yes. Uh, they use, they use uh, a message passing for the message transmission. transmission, They allow memory dynamically, so the, the, the memory is, go, uh, go, is going, is, oh, we are out of time. We can discuss more. Yes. Guys, if you, if, you, if you, I don't know, want to talk, we can, we can ask. I'm be here uh, until 30, okay? We can talk more. Thank you.